football. It's always been a man's game. And it's been that way for over 100 years. But here at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge, there's one woman who hopes to take the field with the guys. Hi, I'm Mo Isom. Mo Isom wants to be a place kicker for one of the top college football programs in the country. Seventeen months of two a days, tears and sweat and blood and all of the above. If I had stopped any sooner, I think I would just be kicking myself. Pun perfectly intended. Mo showed athletic ability at a young age. At 12, she was training with 19-year-old soccer players. After she grew seven inches in one year, her six-foot stature made her a force to contend with. I certainly understood the importance of hard work because yes, things sort of fell into my lap, but I could only keep them there if I worked hard to maintain them. By high school, Mo was scouted by major universities and the national women's soccer team. She was also modeling and that career was booming. While her height made her a presence on the soccer field, with classmates, she felt out of place. I was the giant. I was the huge girl. You know, I had to bear those types of comments and stuff on a daily basis in high school, where all I want is to be accepted and to fit, and I developed an eating disorder that just overcame my life. The only thing that kept Mo from starving herself was her passion for soccer. She needed fuel to play, so diet pills and supplements filled in for food. Raised in a Christian home, Mo felt guilt over what she'd been doing. By her senior year, Mo had enough. I'm really empty. So, so I mean, literally, physically, and emotionally, and spiritually, I'm just empty. I went to the Lord in prayer about it. And you know, scripture tells us, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I just sort of opened my heart back up to what I knew, you know, to the Lord, and um, was immediately just filled with this courage to come clean to my mom, my dad, you know, my family about what I had been doing. Mo got counseling and regained her health. When she arrived at LSU on a full scholarship, she had a record-setting year and was hailed as one of the premier rookie goalkeepers in the country. At the end of that freshman season, truly, I felt untouchable. I was, like, invincible. It was like, if this is what it means to be a Christian, this is great, <laughs> because it was just raining down the blessings and the successes, and I'm like, I am overwhelmed. You know, this is, this is awesome, and it was smooth sailing. But you're right, my life has <laughs> been these, the highest of highs and then the lowest of lows. The moment the three police officers walked into the room my mom, my sister, and I were in and told us that they had found my dad's remains, the world froze. On January 3rd, 2009, Mo's father committed suicide. He was one of her biggest supporters. Mo and her family were crushed. It just didn't make any sense what was happening. And I felt so betrayed by this God that everyone consistently tells me loves us so much. And now suddenly my heart was broken and I didn't feel anything. And so I took off running. I mean, I wanted nothing to do with God. Mo became the party girl and pretended everything was fine. I had really just come to like my breaking point. I, it had almost been a year since the loss of my father and I was exhausted. You know, I was just worn out. In November of that year, Mo was on her way home to Georgia for Thanksgiving. I just started yelling at God. I was just mad. And I said, you know what? I don't believe that you love me the way that you say that you love me. And I said, if you're so real, prove it. I just don't know how I lost control of my car. And I find myself upside down, uh, hanging by my seatbelt in a ravine at 1.30 in the morning. I mean, I woke up choking on my own blood. I was, I was vomiting blood. Mo had a real encounter with God. And that was the moment. I mean, I never 
felt more wrapped in the arms of the Holy Spirit. I could feel God's presence. I think it was that moment where I accepted that, that God was real and that His Son was real in my heart, and I got it because it was a feeling that just overwhelmed me. But her injuries landed her in the hospital. I broke my neck, um, the ribs down the left side of my body, damaged my lungs, my liver, my face, and most severely I had um, some brain contusions. And that, ironically enough, left me with an unbelievable stutter. Mo recovered after extensive rehabilitation and finished her four years on the women's soccer team as the most decorated goalkeeper in the history of LSU. I look back now and think without, without God's hand on that recovery, I would have never been able to have returned in time for soccer. Um, this football would be a blip. It would be, you know, impossible. Today, Mo is in graduate school and trains daily with 99 premier athletes. But why? It was January of 2011, and um, I don't tell too many people this, but God just challenged me to build my platform for him. But Mo was unsure of how the football team would accept her trying out. I stepped into the process and was greeted by nothing but open doors. As the football season nears and the games begin, Mo will try to secure her role as a place kicker for the Tigers. But whatever the outcome, she knows the one who has the playbook. God overwhelmed my heart. And you know, it's been this lifetime of ups and downs, but I wouldn't change a day of it because it's provided me the opportunity to not only grow as a person, but to shine light and joy and hope to other people through my experiences.